am Salsa. I was born into a wealthy family in the Czechoslovakian village of Nakhoradja. Jews were banned from universities, so I worked previously in a high school to earn the equivalent of an engineering degree. Jew in 1944, I was confined to a Jewish ghetto. Jews and I were forced to march to an, a concentration camp in Austria. I was recruited by the Haganah to repair tanks in secret. Then, after that, I was recruited by the Israeli Air Force, and I invented a jet engine. I invented the Markava, which is an Israeli tank. I, saw, I was elected um, Israel's manufacturing president at age 28. My son Ram became an agent for hockey players, so I invented a new kind of hockey stick with the curved bottom and a new kind of puck for roller hockey. I died at age 86, December 6, 2006. Hello, my name is John J. Lab. I was born on November 2, 1844 in Weymouth, Massachusetts. My parents are John White Loud and Sarah Humphrey Blanchard. In 1866, I went to Harvard College. Afterwards, I invented the ballpoint pen, which helps many types of people today. My ballpoint pen is an improvement to the fountain pen, which you dip in ink with the feather, sprinkle salt, and let it dry. My ballpoint pen is better and is good for lettering, and it doesn't smudge. Hello, my name is Morris Meacham, and I was born in 1870 and died in 1958. I am a ghost now, or should I say a wax figure? Anyways, in 1887, I moved to New York and started a candy shop. Is that another one of those little boys stealing my candy? I also sold stuffed puppets. So, one day after I came home from work, I was watching a play, and in the play there was a bear. That's how I came up with the idea of making the stuffed bear. Later on, they named it the teddy bear because of the supposed president who was supposed to like finding bears, and I don't know, maybe, that's how they got it. he got his name because of this whole bear story with him. Anyways, that's all I have to say. Bye bye now. Hello, I have a Drake Ghost born February 2nd, 1980. I am a pioneer in mobile wireless communications and I created many communication devices for carefully in relation to an television walkie talkie. My interest in, in radio. Technology had grown a lot by the time 1936 entered at the B S E E F Cleveland's case of, of applied science in World War II. I had some limited involvement in building a two-way air to ground communication system for the U.S. I died in 2000. Hello, I'm Joseph Freeman. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I invented the flexible straw. It all started. I was at a restaurant with my daughter. My daughter was having a milkshake. She was having a hard time drinking her milkshake. But suddenly I, I had an idea. I took her a straw, cut a screw through the straw, wrapped some duct tape around where the straw was. Then I carefully took out the straw, unwrapped the duct tape and here it is, the new flexible straw. Hello, I'm Hedy Lamar. I invented a way for torpedoes to aim better. I'm also I'm also a mo Hollywood movie star and a genius. I was born November 9th, 1914, and died in January 19, 2000. I made a way a to use radio signals to, to guide torpedoes. Oh, hello. I'm Sergey Brin. I'm a computer scientist and internet entrepreneur. The reason you may know me is because my partner, Larry Page, and I created one of the world's most profitable companies in the world, Google. I immigrated from the Soviet Union with my family when I was six. I went to University of Maryland at, to get my bachelor's degree in, in mathematics and computer science. Where after I graduated, I moved to Stanford University to get my PhD in computer science. That's where I met Larry Page. We became friends fast and, and, and filled our dormitory with cheap computers. We used my data mining skills to create a search engine called, that, 
that we named Google after the Google possibilities it gave you. It got popular fast, and now we have so, and now we've made so many things, as in Google Glass, Chrome, and Chromebooks, Gmail, Google Plus, and now, and now Google is a worldwide name. And it all started from the simple search engine. Hello, my name is Ralph H. Bear. I was born on March 8, 1922 in Bremerhaven, Germany. When I was 11, I, I was kicked out of school and sent to an all-Jewish school. In 1938, my family and I fled before, from Germany before World War II. In 1972, I invented the first video game console called the Magnavox Odyssey. In 2008, I went. I, I was invited to the White House and for a celebration and got a medal. Sadly, about seven months ago, I died at age 92. Hello, my name is Robert G. Alba. I invented the first wireless remote control television. I was born in Vienna, Austria, on December 4th, 1913. I changed the world because now when you want to change a channel. You don't have to get off the couch. I remember when I had to get off the couch so much and I did not like it. I wanted to invent the wireless remote. Most people don't have to think about how the remote works. They just use it. I really had to think about how technology works. This is my wireless remote that I invented in 1950. It works because the light forms a pattern to the button. The receiver and the television recognizes the pattern and causes the television to respond accordingly. Hello, my name is Edward Teller and I invented the hydrogen bomb. I was born into a Jewish family in 1908, Budapest, Austria, Hungary. I was a Hungarian-born American theoretical physicist. All title, I know, but I didn't care. I'm also known as the father of the hydrogen bomb. Let's stop talking about titles and whatnot, and let's get to my life. I immigrated to the United States in, in, in the 1930s. And I was an early member in the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project was an allied effort to develop the first nuclear weapons. In 2003, I had a stroke and died a few days later. Hi, my name is Hilary Brook. I was born on February 14, 1871 in Sheffield, England. I invented stainless steel in 1913. My father was a steel maker at the Firth Steel Company. I spent time working as an assistant there. In 1908, after working as a lab assistant for a time, I was offered the chance to set up Ground Firth Labs, which was financed by the two leading Sheffield Steel companies. Uh, I was focused on solving the problem of corroding vacuum veils by mixing steel with chromium. Using an electric furnace on August 13, 1913, I made the first true stainless steel. It contained 24% carbon and 12.8% chromium. I found that my new steel was stronger and better. I, it resisted the forest corrosion and stains from acid, food, or chemicals. I knew this would be all, this would also be great for making forks and knives, which which rusted unless they were washed and scrubbed completely dry each time they were used. By my, but my employers wouldn't listen to me. Instead, I had knives made, made myself and sold them. I called it rustless steel. It later became known as stainless steel. I died in 1948. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. I was just fidgeting with this here machine. Yeah, this is the on switch now. Okay, so, hi, my name is Dr. Paul Zulus, the electrodyne defibrillator pacemaker. In 1950, I pioneered electrical cardiac resuscitation and cardiac monitoring devices. Together with engineer Helen Belgaia, I designed this early two-function machine made by the electrodyne company in Lowell, Massachusetts. Electrodyne built the first outside pacemaker in 1952 and went on to make many other portable machines based on the technology developed by me. The model that I made combined a defibrillator to restore the heart's beat and a pacemaker to maintain a regular heart rhythm. 
I was born in Los in Boston, Massachusetts, July fifteenth, nineteen eleven, and died January fifth, nineteen ninety nine, in Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Martin Cooper. I was born on December 26, 1928, to Mary and Arthur Cooper in Chicago, Illinois. My dream was to invent a mobile phone that worked outside of cars. So I switched. So I so I started working for a company called Teltype Corporation of Chicago. Their their company was to make phones to and also to make wires that would start help wire phones that needed wires. So. I so I said that people want to talk to people, not to cars. So I switched to a company called Motorola Inc. Their rival company was AT and T, and both of those companies wanted to make mobile phones. My so I invented a mobile phone before AT and T invented their version. These are my the first phone that I made and the second phone, and I managed. So that's how I fulfilled my dream. I'm now still alive and 86 years old. Oh, hello. I'm Albert Einstein. I was born on March 14, 1879, and died on April 18, 1955. I was a German-born boy, and I was Jewish. Back in the 1800s, when you bought stuff like meat, milk, or yogurt, it only lasted for about a day. I didn't like that, so I invented a refrigerator that has no moving parts and runs on heat. Isn't that ironic? Anyway, I lived a good and completed life later on. Hello, fellow Americans. My name is Mark Zuckerberg. I invented Facebook in my Harvard College dorm room. I lived in White. I was born in White Plains, New York. Uh, but it didn't start off as Facebook. It started off as Face Smash, a website where you where you vote on two girls on the way they look. That night, a lot I got a lot of criticism, so I decided to, to delete it. A couple of years later, I came up with the idea of Facebook. Facebook is a way where you can uh, c communicate with people around the world. You can post videos and pictures. You can like and comment other people's uh, videos and pictures. At age 33, I'm the youngest billionaire in the world. My name is Ruth Moscow Hansa. I was born in 1916, and I was mostly known for inventing the Barbie doll. While I was growing up, I learned how to run a business by working at my sister's junk store. In 1939, my husband and I had our own toy company called Mattel. Twenty years later, in 1959, I invented the Barbie doll, which I named after my daughter Barbara. A few years later, I invented the Ken doll, which I named after my son Ken. In 1970, I got breast cancer, which caused me to lose control of my business. Afterwards, I started a new company called Nearly Me. Nearly Me made prosthetics for people who had survived breast cancer. I died at 2012 with a full and accomplished life. My name is Dean Kamen. I was born in 1951, Rockwell Center, Long Island, New York. My dad, Jack, was an illustrator for Mad Comic Books, and my mom was a teacher. I began tinkering with gadgets when I was fairly young. I claim I was about five years old when I invented a way to make my bed without having to run to one side then to the other. Despite the fact that I was very bright and curious, I didn't do well in school. In junior high and high school, my grades were only average. When I was a teenager, I started getting paid for my inventions. I ended up building a basement for my for my parents with all the money. I was hired by rock band, etc. to fix sound and light systems. I was even asked to control the giant ball that was lowered in Times Square on New Year's Eve. I ended up getting more money than my mom and dad got combined in. I got $60,000 a year. I know it was crazy, but worth it. After high school, I went to Worcester Polytechnic Institute in Massachusetts. In 1989, I went to a robotics competition in a small New Hampshire high school gym, which only included 28 teams. In 2004, there were more than 800 teams in the United States. After selling auto syringe, I moved to Manchester, New Hampshire, and started a company called DEKA Research and Development. In 1999, I had an idea, so then I fulfilled my dream and created the electric wheelchair so that you could ride up the chair if you were not able to walk upstairs or anything. After I personally tried it out, they were able to sell them. So they sold it for $29,000. My next invention was called the Segway. It took me 10 years to make, but at least I succeeded. The Segway had no brakes, no engine. It had to be battery powered. The invention knew when to stop. Like when your foot touched the ground, it would stop. It was able to carry people up to 250 pounds and go up to 17 miles per hour. Everyone loved it. 
By 2004, the Segway was not as successful as I thought. We only sold 6,000. People were curious, but not curious enough, to pay 4,950 bucks. The company had to tape back and remodel, because when the batteries went low, the person would fall off. A major blow came when people weren't allowed to ride Segways at Disney theme park February of 2004. Hello, my name is Mark Elliot Zuckerberg. I am an American computer programmer and internet entrepreneur. I am best known as one of five co-founders of the social networking website Facebook. I I I I am chairman and chef executive of Facebook Inc. His uh, my first personal wealth as of March 2015 is estimated to be $35.1 billion. I received a $1 salary of CEO of Facebook. I'm top secret and no one knows who I am. And I created the Iron Dome with Rafael's advanced industries and the IDF. The system is designed to intercept and destroy short-range rockets and artillery shells fired from distances of 4 kilometers to 2.5 miles to 70 kilometers 43 miles to 25 kilometers 160 miles and make it more versatile to, to that it could intercept rockets coming from two directions simultaneously. Hello, my name is Salman Abraham Waxman. I was born July 22, 1888 in Russia, and I died in 1973 in Massachusetts. I moved to the United States in 1910. I went to Rutgers College after graduating. I created a team of scientists at Rutgers University. We invented a lot of important antibiotics. One of the most important discoveries was an antibiotic called streptomycin. Streptomycin was the first antibiotic that can cure tuberculosis. I won the Nobel Prize in 1952 because I had discovered streptomycin. When I was given the award, I was called one of the greatest benefactors of mankind. Hello, I'm Josephine. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I invented the flexible straw. It all started. I was at a restaurant with my daughter. My daughter was having a milkshake. My daughter was having a hard time drinking her milkshake. Suddenly, I had an idea. I took a straw home, stuck a screw through the straw, wrapped some dental floss to wrap the screw, was carefully took out the screw, and wrapped the dental floss. And here it is, the new flexible straw. Hello, I'm Sutter J. Brin. I am a computer scientist and online entrepreneur. The reason you might know me is because my partner, Larry Page, and I created one of the most profitable companies in the world, Google. I immigrated to the Soviet I immigrated to America from the Soviet Union when I was six years old. I went I got my bachelor's degree at University of Maryland studying mathematics and computer science. After I graduated I went I went to University of Stanford to get my P PhD in computer science. That's where I met Larry Page. We became friends fast and filled our dormitory with cheap computers. We used my data mining skills to create to create a search engine that we named Google after the Google possibilities it gave you. Now, we have so many pop products. Google Glass, Chrome and Chromebooks, Gmail, Google Plus, and that's why today, Google is a worldwide name, and it all started from the simple search engine. Yes, yes, it actually worked. No, Brandon, what worked? Who am I? I'll answer all those questions right now. I'm Theodore Raymond, born on July 11th, 1927, but it's been a long time since then, about 33 years, and I've invented light amplification by stimulating emission of radiation, or for short, laser. I invented it for the Hughes Aircraft Company. The possibilities for our endless. It could be used for missile systems, surgery, reading CDs, and so much more. I actually convinced people that it could be that it could help people because they were stuck on the whole idea of it being a death ray. I, I died on May fifth, two thousand seven.
Oh, hello. I'm just filing through these papers. I just got another customer. See how many I have already? Hey. Hello again. My name is Florence Muffin. I was born in Philadelphia on November 6, 1911. I grew up in an extremely poor family and had to work at Woolworths from age 13 to support my family. At age 19, I got married to Aaron Zacks and we moved to Columbus, Ohio. I co-founded the RG Corporation and while looking at latex foam, I discovered that it was a great material to line slippers with. My dear foam slippers, as they were called, were a big hit and over one billion slippers were sold. I died on February 6, 2007.